Hello, and welcome back to the Sharing Insights Podcast. My name is Jason Thomas, and the adventure continues. If you've been following the first year of the podcast, you'll have noticed that I kind of disappeared for a while. The last couple months of 2021 handed me some pretty massive life changes, and these first few months of 2022 have not only been about getting back on my feet, but they've invited me into a co-creative collective that's been giving my life here a new purpose. The long and short of it is that I ended up leaving my farm and home of 12 years. I was pushing to make things happen in a way that my land partners just weren't available for and I wasn't going to get any further there without their support. As difficult a decision as it was, I've packed my things and moved on to a more co-creative environment. In the end, I've welcomed the change and have already begun making new friends and enjoying the fruits of being able to expand my sphere of influence in the region. I'm happy to say, although the podcast might have faded, it hasn't gone out. This episode is all about physical infrastructure. It's an exploration of some of the unique techniques we saw in our first season of interviews. It'll be a shorter episode, given that there's only so much I can tell you in audio format to describe what you'll be much better off watching on our YouTube channel. All the same, I'll go over some highlights and maybe help you entice you in that direction. I'll start off with our visit to Brave Earth. In the farm tour that Ali Khan gave me, we saw an array of different building materials that they've been working with, from cob to bamboo, to earthen floors, to cobber-edged fibrillite. We saw some aircrete domes, faux palm thatched roofs, and more. I enjoy seeing how each iteration of each construction method they've experimented with grows with successive adaptations. An interesting note is that while they began using a lot of bamboo and cob combinations in their early structures, they've been using less cob as time goes on. For those who aren't familiar with the word cob, it simply refers to the construction style that uses a mix of clay, sand, and some kind of fiber similar to what's used to make adobe bricks. As beautiful as cob is, and as abundantly available as the clay is in most parts of Costa Rica, The reason they've been more selective about their use of it is they quickly learned how much time and labor cob construction can take as compared to most other material choices available. One fascinating material that we got to see in the video is aircrete. As described on DIYaircrete.com, aircrete is a lightweight cement-based material that contains stable air cells uniformly distributed throughout the mixture. Utilizes a stable air cell rather than the traditional aggregate. It's a minimum of 20% per volume foam, and it's also known as cellular concrete, foam concrete, uh, foam concrete, lightweight concrete, or aerated concrete. Brave Earth had built five of these domes by the time of my visit. They'd connected with an organization called Dome Gaia that came out and organized several workshops. Those who attended the dome making workshops learned the methods while working with them. Dome Gaia designed their own unique machines for mixing cement with biodegradable soap to create the kind of cement foam that we're talking about. This lightweight, solid material has a surprisingly high compression strength. The structures are made in layers. Each layer is wrapped in an industrial-grade felt material called geotextile, which is dipped in cement and wrapped over each aircrete layer to add tensile strength. This combination of techniques makes the structures nearly indestructible. Once the dome is shaped, a final layer of stucco is applied for aesthetics and water resistance. Ali Khan recommended to me that the domes do best when they get a fresh coat of plaster every few years. It helps protect them from leaks. Another building style they're using is an A-frame, which they call the jungle hut. It's made mostly out of bamboo, with some choice inclusions of synthetic materials for aesthetics and longevity. The first element that I noticed was the roofs. These A-frames, at first glance, look like they're made with palm thatch, which is beautiful, but it requires a lot of palm leaves to create and can require quite a bit of maintenance. It's generally advised to regularly burn a fire under thatched roofs so that the bugs don't live in and eat the leaves. Otherwise, you'll be replacing all that thatch every handful of years. But, in this case, the polycarbonate material looks just like palm leaves. It offers the cooling and noise reduction benefits of not using metal, but it can last several decades with little to no maintenance. Over the front porch of these A-frame cabins, they use some high-quality translucent polycarbonate roof panels to bring light in. The contrast of the plastic against the natural look of the bamboo and thatch didn't look quite right, though. So to modify it, they used some natural material called Kanya Bravo, which can be found pretty abundantly down here. 
They strung them together into simple panels and placed them beneath the polycarbonate to add an organic feel. It's very well done. The floors of the A-frames showed another simple innovation that impressed me. They chose to use sheetrock for the flooring, as the structures are all constructed on stilt-built platforms to avoid having to carve up the land digging flat foundations. Sheetrock floors are relatively inexpensive to install, but are usually pretty unattractive. The team at Brave Earth fixed this by cutting the sheetrock into angular pieces that formed a mandala shape. Adding some thin pieces of wood where they meet gives it an elegant and intentional look at a relatively low price. Brave Earth is designing art into its cabin sculptures at every opportunity. When you check out the farm tour video that we did of their place, you'll see how designing irregularity into your structures can be a great way to enhance their beauty. Justin Dolan is another guest who's been giving a lot of thought, planning, and experimentation to his building approach. St. Michael's Permaculture Country Club has an array of different structures built, ranging from a double-decker shipping container home to bamboo-framed greenhouses. Shipping containers are a popular upcycled shell of steel that many people are experimenting with to frame their homes. Justin mentioned that while they do offer some cost savings from buying new steel, many of the containers available are in poor condition and they need a lot of improvements to create a suitable end product. He also didn't like the limitations that it placed on his designs. Depending on your needs, they still might be a good solution. While building with steel can inherently leave you with a structure that gets quite hot, Justin's been using plant-based solutions that have proven pretty impressive. Two of the adaptations he's applied are the use of living rooftops and growing vines along the walls. By covering these structures with soil, grass, flowers, and other lovely plant material, the temperature of the structures is significantly reduced. He even has the gray water from the house piped out to feed the vines that he has growing on the outsides of the walls. Building structures partially into the hillside is yet another way that he uses to keep the temperatures low. Another cooling feature that Justin used is the tactic of putting a swimming pool in front of the house. He says that when the wind passes over the pool and toward the house, the water's surface reduces the wind temperature as it approaches and enters the home. It cools it by several degrees. And it's also pretty epic to have a swimming pool out in front of your door, if I may say so myself. Of course, swimming pools generally need a lot of water. For that reason, Justin has a storage shed next to his house and pool, whose roof he uses to collect water into a large storage tank that he has mounted below the shed. It's a really great design. Once the tank is full, Justin has enough water to freshen up the pool. Like many of our guests, Justin is a big fan of bamboo as well. He recommends to any landowner to plant several varieties of bamboo and plant early. Building with bamboo enhances the quality of the environment and is an ideal tropical building material. He also encourages us to choose insect-resistant woods to reduce the need for treating them. However, he does acknowledge the importance of treating wood that does need it and to keep you from having to replace it sooner than necessary. Nico Bodifer and Ed Bernhard are another couple of guests that use a lot of bamboo in their structures. Nico has a series of old canvas tents that he bought from the Salvation Army, and he throws them over some bamboo frames to make his popular glamping rentals. Nico, for the most part, chooses not to treat his bamboo. He just makes sure he has plenty of it planted everywhere. He prefers to build his structures in ways that make it easy for him to change the poles out when they begin to decay or get eaten by beetles. At the end of Ed's farm tour video, he mentioned to us a design for a solar food dryer made out of bamboo in a gothic arch style. Well, he's finished it, and it's impressive. What's most impressive about it is how simple it is to build, and how hot it gets in there. He's invited me over to create a mini course to show you how to make one too. Subscribe to our YouTube channel to catch the video when it comes out. Ed showed us another exciting innovation in his farm tour video worth mentioning here. He created a biosand filter just outside of his house to filter his drinking water, and it's so simple. It's made with a 16-inch concrete culvert, or cantaria here in Costa Rica. He fills these with rock dust, or polvo piedra, to about 16 inches from the top of the cylinder. He has an output tube that comes up only 12 inches from the top, so the sand remains covered in water at all times. He fills the culvert with fresh water from his well, and it filters down through the rock dust and up through the exit tube, leaving it clean and fresh. Ed's neighbor Susanna Leff also uses bamboo regularly, but in different and crafty ways. 
primarily for her garden projects. One example is found in her greenhouse, where she hangs lengths of bamboo culms vertically, strung one under the other, with holes cut in the top to make horizontal growing space. Another one of her structures that we can see in her farm tour video that actually caught me by surprise was her drying house. I was impressed with how hot and dry it got in there, even during the rainy season, and it's built with a transparent roof panel but only has screen walls. Even without any humidity control, it seems to be very effective. Now Terry Lillian Newton dropped us a clever word of wisdom for anyone who keeps livestock. She warns us not to use cement floors for horses or other hooved animals. It can damage their feet. Now I wish I knew that when we poured a cement floor for our goats for easy cleaning. She recommends using dirt floor covered in wood chips. You can change them out regularly and even use the enriched wood chips for garden mulch. Our last stop in our season one tour was Lynx Gimon, and boy do I like his style. Lynx has a background in building tree platforms that appear to be minimalistic, but are very well made, look fantastic, and are cozy to hang out in. He brings a lot of fun to the environment with these tree platforms, as well as style and function to the project. In the video tour we took of Sal Cargo's homestead, we also got a glimpse of the sizable but simple greenhouse they built out of scrap wood frame and a transparent plastic roof with shade cloth for walls. That's what I've got for you this episode, folks. Our next episode will be the completion of this recap series where we'll explore some insights gathered around cultivating an impactful belief system. I'll also be making a long-awaited announcement regarding the future of the podcast. Be sure to stay tuned. Until then, keep it sustainable. <laughs>